What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. Today I want to share with you one of the most closely guarded secrets to interpreting fish finders that offshore fishermen never share in videos, on TV, anywhere. And it's something that once you understand, you're going to immediately become a more effective and more efficient offshore fisherman. So let's get into it. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to identify active bass on your fish finder so you can actually graph over offshore structure, see fish on your graph, and know that they're going to bite when you throw your bait down there. It's super important to learn how to do this if you're going to be an effective and efficient offshore angler. And I'm actually going to use a lot of examples comparing bass to humans. They're a little bit strange, but hopefully we will get the point across. And I've kind of bucketed the ways you can identify active bass into four groups. So I'm going to show you four different ways to identify active bass using some kind of interesting examples and metaphors. So hope you'll enjoy. Number one, bait fish close to bass. So the first way to identify if bass are actively feeding on your fish finder is by looking for bait fish close to bass on your down imaging. And I actually just made a video explaining how to differentiate bass from other species of fish on your fish finder. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out right here. It's also in the link in the description of this video. So what I mean by bait fish close to bass is that you're going to have a ball of bait fish in close proximity, let's say no more than two inches on your fish finder screen from a group of bass. And I kind of equate this picture here to a cafeteria full of people eating lunch. So if you look at this picture of a workplace cafeteria here, you can see there's a lot of people here, they have their lunch, their KFC, and they have one primary objective. They're gonna eat their lunch, and they're gonna be there from noon to one, because that's when their lunch break is. And it's pretty easy to tell that all of these people are there to eat. And so it wouldn't be that unreasonable to think that if you came into that lunchroom and let's say brought a Chick-fil-A meal and was like, hey, I'll give you guys some free Chick-fil-A, you don't have to order from the cafeteria or, you know, eat your crappy sandwich, cold sandwich, you can have this Chick-fil-A, there's a pretty good chance that someone's going to actually take up your offer and grab your Chick-fil-A meal and eat it. Now, let's say that it's later in the afternoon, the same lunchroom is now being used for an office meeting. And there is a group of people in there, maybe not as many people, and they're there for the main objective of having a meeting. Maybe it's like an annual sales meeting, really important to have their VP there in the room. Well, if you came by then with that same Chick-fil-A meal, then the chances of the people in that meeting grabbing that Chick-fil-A meal and eating that sandwich are a lot less likely because they don't want to look like a pig, they don't want to you know, mess up maybe their diet, they only want to eat during specific meal times, whatever it is. It's just not the feeding period for this group of people. They ate at lunch and they're going to eat at dinner. Now, there's a chance that maybe one of the guys sneaks like a fry and maybe has like maybe one chicken nugget or something, but they'll save the rest of the meal for later. And this is kind of the same thing that's happening here on your down imaging where you see these bait fish by the bass. So if you look at this image, you can see that these bass are very close to this ball of bait fish. And there's actually a few fish that are streaking up and actually eating some of these bait fish. And this is kind of like the bass being on their lunch break. The food just arrived, they're going to be there and they're going to be eating like crazy. And so if you throw your bait down there, let's say a crankbait or a jig, you have a lot higher likelihood of getting those fish to bite because they're already feeding. They're already in that active, aggressive mood. Now, let's say that you find another group of fish here, and there's no bait fish around. There's just a fish. Well, this is kind of like the guys who are in the meeting, and they can't really eat right now. They have another mission. And in this case, the fish just might be resting. They may not be that aggressive. They don't want to eat right now. And so you might be able to drag a jig or a shaky head or a drop shot by them really, really slow. Maybe those fish might go for like a little snack. You might get one of those fish. But you're not going to catch as many fish as you would when those fish are actively feeding on those bait fish. In this image, you might catch 10, 15 fish, where in the image before, you may only catch one fish, and it might take you 30 minutes of dragging a worm down there to get those fish to bite. And so all that being said is that by using your down imaging image, you can tell when you have a higher likelihood of catching more fish and the fish are easier to catch because they're in a feeding mood due to actually food being right next to them. They're not going to eat if there's no food there. And so hopefully that kind of makes sense. And I have a couple more images here of fish close to bait fish. And in all these cases, I was able to catch some really good fish 
off these spots and catch multiple fish, three, four, five fish. And I knew these fish were gonna bite because I saw the fish plus the bait fish all in the same image. Number two, many bass, few bait fish. So the second way you can identify if bass are actively feeding on your fish finder is by looking for an image where you see a lot of bass and a very small amount of bait fish. And the reason for this is because when you have a limited amount of food and a lot of bass, there's gonna be a lot of competition for that food. And so these bass are going to be a lot more aggressive trying to take the few bait fish that are there away from their competitors around them. So again, I'm gonna use another workplace example to explain what's going on in this image. And I know these examples are a little bit out there, but I think they'll resonate well with my audience, at least the guys I've met in person. And so if we take the example of a break room in this case, and let's say that there are three people in a break room and someone brings a huge KFC buffet lunch and puts it on the table. You got the sides, the chicken, drinks, desserts, all that stuff. Well the people who are in the break room don't really jump out of their chairs right away to start grabbing all of this food because there's so much to go around. There's no hurry to get any food. They're not worried that they're going to run out. And so they might take their time, they might finish writing their email, stuff like that, and then go over, grab some of the food, and sit back down. Again, no competition to get the food because there's so much to go around. Now let's say that the same break room now has maybe 10 or 15 people in it, and there are three Diet Cokes sitting on the table. Now in this case, maybe there's five or six guys who are like, man, I could definitely use a Diet Coke right now, but they know that they're gonna go pretty quick if they don't grab one right away. So the second they walk in the room, they make a beeline for the table and they grab one of those Diet Cokes. And this is because there's competition between them and the other people in the office or the break room to get those Diet Cokes. And so, kind of like the image I showed earlier, when you have a lot of fish and a very small amount of bait fish, those fish are going to be competitive against each other and they don't want the other fish in that school to get more food than they do. So they're going to be a lot more aggressive, they're going to feed a lot better. Now if you take a look at this image, you'll see that there is a ton of bait fish in this image and there are only a few bass, maybe two or three bass in this image right below the school of bait fish. And in this case, there is a lot of food to go around, very few fish, and so these fish aren't as eager to run out and eat some baits. And so you might find that in this first group where there was very little bait and a lot of bass, these fish are going after the shad and you can throw down a crankbait or a swim bait or something down there and these bass are so ravenous, they're so competitive that they'll just eat your swim bait without even thinking, without even really examining it because they just want to get some food before everyone else does where when you have a few bass and a ton of food, the bass are not in as much of a hurry and if you throw that same swim bait down there again, you might not have those bass actually eat your bait because they might take more time to examine it and they're like, oh, that doesn't look quite right. I'm gonna go eat some of these other shad that look more lifelike. And so usually when you find a large number of bass with a small amount of bait fish, those fish are gonna be more aggressive, they're gonna be more active, and they're gonna be a lot easier to catch than the fish where there's a lot of bait and few fish. Number three, bass on top of drops. The next way to identify if bass are actively feeding is to look for fish on top of drop-offs. And here's an image of a school of bass that's on top of an offshore ledge. And these fish were actively feeding and I was able to get these fish to bite. And now here's an image of a school of bass that's off the side of an offshore ledge. These fish are inactive, they were not feeding and I could not get these fish to bite. And I'm going to use the example of a swimming pool to explain this phenomenon to you guys. So if you take a look at the swimming pool, you have the shallow end and the deep end of the pool. And let's say that I gave you a challenge and said, I will give you $10 if you can get this metal ball out of the swimming pool in 10 seconds. And I'm gonna throw the ball into the pool. And I give you two options. Do you want me to throw it in the shallow end of the pool or the deep end of the pool? Well, obviously you're gonna say the shallow end of the pool because all you have to do in the shallow end is literally wade in, bend down and pick it up where if I throw it in the deep end of the pool, you actually have to jump in, swim down there, and try to grab it a lot more difficult. And this is the same for the fish that are setting up on ledges. In this case, on the ledge, the deep end of the pool is the deep water, the channel 
or just deeper water in general, and then the shallow end is like the top of a ledge, the top of a point, or the top of a drop-off. And so when these fish are wanting to feed, it's a lot easier for them to get the bait fish that are up on top of the drop as opposed to the fish that are over the middle of the channel, just because there's less water to have to ambush them in, just like it's easier to get the ball out of the shallow end of the swimming pool than it is to get it out of the deep end of the swimming pool. And so usually when I see bass that are up on top of a ledge and they're positioned in the shallower water, that just tells me that they are looking to feed, they're waiting for bait fish to come by, and they're a lot easier to catch. They're kind of in an active feeding position where the fish that may be suspended over the middle of the channel or that are off the side of the drop, those fish are not as likely to feed. They're basically just resting. And a lot of times bass will just chill out over the middle of the channel or off the end of these drops pretty much all day. Maybe 10, 15 hours of the day they'll be off the drop and then the other, you know, maybe 10, five to 10 hours a day, they actually are going to be in those active feeding positions. And sometimes a year, they may only be in the active feeding position for an hour or two all day. And so a lot of times timing is a big key in offshore fishing. And you can tell when that correct timing is by looking for these fish that are on top of the drops as opposed to being over the creek channel or off the sides of the drops. Number four, bass close to cover. And then the last way to identify if bass are actively feeding using your fish finder is to look for bass that are close to offshore cover. And by cover, I mean rocks, brush piles, sticks, shell beds, things like that. And a lot of times when you're graphing over, let's say an offshore brush pile, you might notice that there are a lot of bait fish that are high in the water column and there's a lot of fish that are swimming away from the brush pile, kind of scattered all around it. And a lot of times these fish are chasing these bait fish that are swimming around over the tops of these brush piles. And these fish are a little bit hard to catch because they're moving around a lot. Maybe they're individual fish that are swimming around chasing schools of bait fish. They're not grouped up and they're not going to be competitive like we talked about in some of the other examples here. And so a lot of times if I see these fish that are suspended over the brush piles and they're individual fish kind of chasing bait, I'll ignore those fish and I'll wait till maybe the sun comes up or the conditions change and the fish start getting tighter to the cover. And so in this example, you'll see this brush pile where I have five or six dots really close to the side of this brush pile or even inside the brush pile. These fish are now positioned right on that cover and they're actually relating to that piece of cover and I can bring a bait like a jig or a drop shot by that brush and I have a lot better chance of getting those fish to bite because again, they're grouped up tighter, they're gonna be competitive for when my bait comes by, and they're a lot easier to get to bite. And so in general, when you're looking for fish on offshore cover, like a brush pile, rock pile, stuff like that, it's better to find fish that are tight to that cover or close to the cover, as opposed to being spread out and all around the water column, away from the brush pile, away from the rock pile. So guys, that's it. Those are four ways to identify if bass are actively feeding on your fish finder. And if you take the time to graph around on your lakes and find fish that are in these active feeding positions with your fish finder, you're going to be able to catch a lot more good fish offshore and improve your odds of catching fish whenever you stop your boat. Now, I will say that you may idle for hours and hours and hours until you find a spot that has these actively feeding bass. And even in my eight hour graphing sessions, I may only find three or four groups of fish that are actively feeding. And so you'll spend a lot of time graphing over fish that are in inactive modes or that are not feeding. And so don't get discouraged if you think that the fish you're seeing are all inactive. At some point, those fish are going to pull up and feed. They will be aggressively feeding because they have to eat to live. And you just have to be on the offshore spot at the right time to find those fish when they're actively feeding. And so just spend a lot of time graphing, don't spend as much time fishing, and you're gonna catch a lot more fish offshore, especially if you use the tips in this video. So again, thanks for checking out the video. Hope you enjoyed, and if you did find the video helpful and you think a friend would enjoy, please share out the video. It helps out the channel a lot. And also subscribe if you haven't already for more fish and oil content. I have a lot more videos coming out, and I'm gonna to try to put out as many views as I can in November, so expect a lot of content coming to this channel in November and forward. So thanks again, and I'll see y'all in the next one.